Question whether or not he is going to be in the mix for this title this year. He was 310. Again, if he came back the other way and was 290, he might have been more competitive. Uh, I think he should have probably dialed it back a little bit. Nass is, it's not. Relax. He put it Nathan in the wrong switch. But the real battle is going to be for that third place spot. It's wide open because William Bonick and Roland Winkler are also sent back. Switch. Really and the judges are definitely going to be mixing these guys up. They want to get it right, Dan. Yep. I don't care if you're fourth place or fifth place. This is what these guys do. They want to get it right. Is it safe to say that the happiest guy in Las Vegas right now is probably Ruli Winkler? Ruli has never been in this territory. He's never been fourth in the world. He's never been third. He's never been second. So he's had a very, very good run so far. And to be in that first call out for him, his work is done as of right now. Will you consider how much he has done to fine tune that physique? Because there, there was a time where that physique looked nothing like an elite, world class, yeah. Olympia contending physique. He had a lot of parts, but it never flowed together. And uh, he's really gone to the drawing board and he's created something pretty formidable. And right now it's making a run of the title. You've got to credit Vader Budai and the Oxygen crew. Those guys are working miracles over there. I was there when. Uh, Big Rolly won the amateur Arnold Classic. And we're a long ways away from that. But we're going to get a final look at those top guys one more time. And Dan, I want you to pay particular attention to the front posts of Sean Rhodes and Phil Heath, and then compare and contrast when they turn to the rear. Because this, to me, right now is a two-man fight. Lucas. So right now, you see it as Sean Rhodes and Phil Heath Alex. gunning for the 2018 Mr. Absolute. Olympia. Charles okay. and Steve. And even though this is one of those bottom call-outs, this is a very important call-out for these guys because these guys had to qualify to get here. Charles and Alex, switch, please. I got to tell you, this guy's impressive. Alex, Alex will see some days ahead of him, number five. He's got a pretty little body there. Alexi Rivera, the pride of Puerto Rico, the and winner of the Tampa Pro is here in Las Vegas. And when you get the approval of Sean Ray, you know you're on to something. And uh, it looks like this guy is uh, making quite an impression. And you're right, he could be one of those guys. We're, we're looking for some new blood to come into this Olympia stage and uh, start to give us some new physiques, some new personalities to talk about. And uh, Alexi is uh, one of the new crop. Hey, you pitch the right shows, you build your name. Pick it up the back a little bit. Talent and conditioning. He can, he can make a run next year. And, uh, back the whole line. Move up. Well, the other night at the press conference, Sean Roden was exuding confidence. He had said, just wait till you see what I bring. Last year I was fifth. I know I missed the mark, but uh, I have done things this year that are going to put me in the position to win. That's pretty much what he said. And uh, he is delivering on that promise. And to that tune, Dan, him and Phil are not best of friends. Uh, this is like a Rocky Balboa, Apollo Creed situation. Apollo Creed being Phil Heath. Um, Sean Roden is quietly trudging along, trying to close that gap and take what Phil has spent a lifetime owning. Favorite seven stand down trophies. Phil does not want to lose to Sean Roden. Well, Sean, uh, Phil Heath is the champ, and. Uh, I don't know about the expression, you got to knock out the champ. I actually don't believe in that expression. A win is a win. And uh, Phil Heath needs to be the best bodybuilder in this lineup of 19 to, re to retain the title. But uh, I'm anxious to see what Steve Weinberger does uh, once he brings the top guys back out again 
Um, if he reduces it to a two-man call-out, um, either way, right now, fans around the world, they want to see these comparisons. And Sean Roden versus Phil Heath is turning out to be the story of the 2018 Olympia. But I'll tell you what, we don't know what that judging panel is thinking. And Ruli Winkler is bringing some pretty dangerous things to the stage. Yeah, they don't pay us the big bucks for not giving our opinion, so I'm going to give them mine right now. Uh, this is a two-man contest. Sergio and John and the third and fourth, you got to deal with Roly Winkler and William Bonin. And if i got to go out on a limb tonight, it's going to change tomorrow in 24 hours. I've got William Bonick in fourth, I've got Roly Winkler in third. I've got Sean Roden pushing that apple cart over, but he hasn't closed the door. And we're going to get another look at that before this pre is over, I'm sure. And if you want to hit us up and let us know what you're thinking over the next 24 hours, do it. You can hit me up over on Instagram, uh, Digital Muscle Media. You can hit me up on Facebook, uh, Dan Solomon. Of course, Sean Ray is on all the social media platforms. And uh, let us know what you think. We want to hear about it because we'd love to get a sense for what the, the fans, what you guys are thinking as you watch this show. And uh, right now, we're just kind of the two of us here in our own private think tank. But uh, we know there's some opinions and some strong ones from people that are oftentimes a lot smarter than us and have a better sense for what this competition um, looks like um, from their seat. So uh, we definitely want to hear what you have to say. It's a global broadcast, Dan. I mean, people are watching all over the world who's going to be crowned the next Mr. Olympia. Will it be 13th again for, for Phil Heath and holding on to that? Or will we have a new 14th? And, of course, they can find me on social media, on Instagram, uh, Sean Ray, IFB Pro, of course, Sugar Sean Ray on Facebook. I answer all my questions, and I try to give my feedback. I want to see this last and final call out. And I would like to see all four, not just two, because I believe that William Bonick has got to fight Roly Winkler to stay in that top three. And I believe that Sean Roden has got to wrestle this title away from Phil Heath. So I hope the judges make him work for their titles. Side tricep. I remember, Dan, and you weren't there, but I was on that stage when Dorian Yates would get one call out, or Lee Haney would get one call out, and the challengers never had an opportunity to make the champion work. Bill Heath is going to have to work for this one. Well, what a story. It's great seeing Sergio Oliva on that stage, flanked by some great new young talent, uh, some up-and-comers, and also a couple veterans up there as well. So it's uh, a real great mix. We're back here at the 2018 Olympia. Our coverage is presented by our friends at iHerb, iHerb.com, um, and I am told that I am supposed to pronounce it, iHerb, emphasizing the H, I-H-E-R-B.com, and, uh, and of course, the folks at Muscle Farm who are um, supporting all William and Phil. And here's the call-out we were anticipating, Dan. This Phil, being a global contest, Roden and William. So as you mentioned, he did bring William Bonac into this group. As well, he should. This is, these athletes are from the Netherlands, from Egypt, from Canada, Puerto Rico, Czech Republic, Curacao, very international flavor. But this is what we came here to see. These are gonna be our top four finalists. If you look at how Phil's carrying himself on stage, his hands on his hips, Relaxed. Sean Roden not like that. Sean's stomach is tight and tense, and he's waiting to keep out. Steve Weinberger, the head judge, moves Sean Roden next to the champ, Bill Heath. Rolly Winkler, of course, on one side, William Bonac on the opposite side. These are, at least for now, the top four bodybuilders in this contest and in the world as they're going to hit the front lat spread. And Sean Ray, I'm going to let you break it down as they go pose for pose. I'm going, I, I, uh, Sean Roden has the front double bicep. And uh, his front lat spread is not all that impressive. See, the quad sweep is what's going to give Phil the advantage That's in that Phil's shot. shot. Yeah, but of Phil's course. relaxing the midsection just a little bit too much for my liking. He's leaving the door open for these guys, man, and he needs to pay attention to all the aspects of this competition when he's posing. That's one of Phil's shots, that side chest shot. Of course, Sean's a little bit light in the pecs. He's very light in the triceps, as you'll notice. Phil's arms are much bigger than Sean Roden's arms. I'd like to see the camera guys see if they can pull back and get a wider shot so we can see all of them at the same time um, for our viewers. That's exactly the angle we want to see, so it kind of gives everybody at home a better a better perspective of what's happening. The lower back, of course, a strength for Phil. Now, Sean, who wins this pose, Sean Roden or Phil Heath? Phil Heath wins the back double bicep Easily, pose, sure. but, but Sean's right there. He Sean's doesn't give up a whole lot. It. It's not the gap that there once was. Sean, Ray, Sean Roden 
make some significant improvements. And of course, if Sean Roden wins this Olympia, he's going to become the new Sean. So that's a whole other issue that you're going to have to worry about later, Sean Ray. It, it is the, hey, the, Mr. Olympia and Sean should be synonymous. <laughs> it sounds beautiful to me. But if you're going to give Phil the back shots, you've got to give Sean the front shots. So now we're splitting hairs. Sean's in great shape. He's got the glutes. He's much improved from a year ago. You, you have to reward that as well. Right now, who's looking at the edge for the third spot if you compare William Bonac and Roland Winkler, two very different physiques. I got to go with Roland Winkler. I mean, I love William Bonac. He's muscular all over, but he looks watery throughout. He looks a little heavy in the midsection. It takes the lines away. This is a big comparison coming up. Steve Weinberger just called the abdominal and thigh shot. Sean Roach. In this competition, that's really going to go a long way, of course. That's Sean Roach's pose. Sean doesn't have the separation in the quads, but he has everything you need. That, that shot right there, his waist disappears. Still looks a little uncomfortable hitting that shot, and I'm surprised he didn't hold it longer, and now he's relaxing his midsection. Never Heath relax. Is, Phil Heath is making his money on the quads tonight. That's what's keeping him in that in that group, right? Because Phil Heath but when he relaxes his stomach, that's just, the problem. It's killing me right the, now. The midsection for Phil Heath is an issue. It's looking different. Um, Sean Roden's midsection is crisp. So that's going to be an area where Sean Roden is really going to score bigger than Jackson. And of course, Rooley Winkler, when he hits the most muscular, it's it's lights out. he's an airplane. It's, it's out loud. It's lights out. It's unbelievable. I'm a fan of Phil. Right now, this contest is wide open. Well, there it is. That's the final look for the preliminary judging of your 2018 Mr. Olympia. And um, we're going to head to break. We'll be back after this. this year pull that phone up go to mr olympia.com the big old square sitting right there that says fans vote all you got to do is hit the passcode mr o m r o and you can vote right now for your favorite olympian right here tonight very special we can bring that to you guys appreciate all the fans coming out the court and supporting the olympia once again got any, we got any, we got any 212 fans here Lex Lewis going for number seven, history in the making, once again here on the Olympia stage. Are we ready for our 212 Olympians? Come on, folks, we got to make a little noise. We got some of the best in the world right here in Las Vegas once again. Are we ready, folks? All right, let's see, start things off with our individual presentations. Please welcome your first competitor, a man with a name so nice, they named him twice. Please welcome Amon.
Campronero. Alex Campronero from my neck of the woods down in South Florida, a contest promoter with the NPC. He actually won his class in 2013 North Americans. He then went on to win a couple 212 titles, and uh, earlier this year he scored a runner up in Chicago, and uh, he is competing in the Mr. Olympia contest, I believe, for the third time. A very symmetrical, classic looking position. When it's classic's the operative word, I think he should drop down into the classic. Because in this division, he's going to have to pack on a lot more muscle uh, to battle a guy like a Flex Lewis or even an Ashkenani who is shorter and smaller. He would be a very good classical bodybuilder. 212 going forward for him is going to be hard. He's going to have to bring up those hamstrings, pick it up the back, get a little bit more size on those arms. That's bodybuilding. And there's no restrictions there. But he could actually slide into that classic physique and uh, be very competitive right off the bat. Strong bodybuilder out of New Jersey. He can't be five foot three, but uh, there's not a whole lot more he can do with what he has to work with. Great quads, very strong. He needs more hamstrings. He's got a very nice, complete package for his height. This guy, I've seen him squat like four plates down in the gym. Yeah, a lot of these two both competitors are really, really strong. He won last year's Europa Dallas. Uh, on this year's New York Pro, and uh, he's uh, building up a nice resume for himself in this division. He's trying to improve upon a ninth place finish here at the Olympia a year ago. Very balanced physique for his height to weight ratio. But again, the quads are a little bit overpowering the hamstring.
I'm an Olympia competitor. To watch bodybuilding's greatest weekend, which uh, we're obviously excited to be here each year. But uh, this uh, this event has uh, has shaped up to be something pretty interesting because so far we haven't seen anybody just show up and hit it out of the park yet. And, uh, and I'm talking in both of the divisions now. There isn't the body and then come over here and display it. Uh, they're revered over in the Middle East, uh, sometimes Thank worshipped in terms of uh, what they're able to do with their physiques. If you have a chance to go, and I'm sure you might want to dust off the clothes and trust to go over there, do it. Former Olympia champion, <laughs> David Henry. This is where it started. Well, here he is, one of the greats, making his, get this, his 12th.
not happening for him tonight. He needs to drop some water. He needs to tighten up between now and tomorrow night because that is not conditioning on the front that's going to win him in a little. that he doesn't get crisp. And people want to know, what does crisp mean? What does detailed mean? You just have to learn to separate those muscles. And I think, Dan, a lot of times the bodybuilders do not spend enough time on the isometric poses separate from the training that takes place in the gym. Great physique, though. Absolutely. He's got everything there. Top three at the Arnold uh, 2 uh, earlier this year. He scored a couple top threes in Fiji and New Zealand. He's got the kind of look that the judges like. He's kind of the embodiment of what this division was created for right. early on. He's got everything. He just needs to tighten up, come in a tad harder. And it just goes to show, it really underscores just how far the expectation for conditioning has come. Because this is such a thing that there was a time where that would be enough. enough, right? That's a champion physique. That's kind of the physique by which the 
fathers of bodybuilding created this sport for, right? This is the way physiques are supposed to look. And um, unfortunately, or, or fortunately, however you look at it, the conditioning standard has gotten so high, the graininess, the dense muscle, the weight of muscle weighs, the separation, it's just at a whole other level. Well, let me tell you, I mean, a lot of guys have gotten away from practicing the posing along the way to peaking. If I had any advice for any of these bodybuilders coming up, what's the separation we're looking for? Practice, 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 posing all the way throughout your preparation. It changes the way you look, because posing is all the judges see, not the training. Five foot five, 212. He looks like. was in Toronto. Very nice classical physique. A little bit more meat on the hamstring. competing for the final time as a 212 competitor at 34 years old. They call him the Welsh Dragon, and as Bob Cicarillo just mentioned from the podium, he has won this contest each of the last six years, the most decorated champion of all time in this division, working with super trainer Neil Hill and uh, looking for title number seven. And, uh, of course, this is the final time we're going to get to see him. But first things first, Sean Ray, so far, based on what you're seeing, is this a guy who came here and is prepared to win the title for the seventh consecutive time? Well, when you see this physique as many times as I have, it's very hard to, to pick it apart. 
trademark glutes are in uh, the back. This is where I said he's going to win the competition and he's going to win. He's hard to beat from the back. This is where Derek Lunsford, I said, is going to have to challenge him if he wants to take this title. Uh, got to see what he looks like from the front a little bit more. He's got those huge arms with the chest a little bit shallow in terms of thickness. It's always been something I criticized him for, but he's brought the traps up. Uh, calves are world class. Those calves. I'll say this. This is a better Flex Lewis than we saw here last year. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. To start. It'll be interesting to see who he's compared with. That's he's got nothing to be ashamed of tonight. Individual so presentations. We're going to break it down into the groups. If I can have our first group of six on the center line, please. All right, just as, as they did with the uh, the big guys, they're doing the same here in the Q12. They're going to numerically bring them out, I think, in three separate grids this time as they compare the, or they actually give these guys a chance to stand All side right, by side. Coveted first call out. And, uh, you know, as we've gone through this 212 division, you know, we were kind of waiting to see if somebody would step forward and establish themselves as the guy who's making a run at Flex News Relax, as we've had in years right. past. And uh, Sean Ray, I'm, I'm anxious to hear uh, your take as to who has done that, who has sent that message. Because right now, Ahmad Ashkenani, he comes in as that 
perennial runner-up, right? He's the guy that we kind of assume. Um, there was talk that Hadi Chopin would be in this competition. As it turns out, that is not the case. Yeah, the presidential ban on Iraq or Iran, it's, it's really killing. It's a shame because this is an athletic sport. I mean, Hadi Chopin is no threat or any danger to the United States security, and it would have been great to have him here. If nothing else, just to have him stand next to James Blake well, Lewis. Plus, he's an incredibly good bodybuilder, right? I Arguably, mean, he, took him out in Korea. And yeah, didn't so uh, I, would I love think to see the rubber match. It's really disappointing for all of us that we don't get to see that that matchup. That uh, that that they uh, kind of change the landscape of how this contest goes. Because I walked into this weekend assuming he was going to be here and. Uh, um, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't follow all that. Hadi Chopin only a year ago was second to Cedric McMillan in San Marino Pro, yeah. so he's yeah. a legitimate bodybuilder. So, uh, uh, but I, I, I want to see what the judges do here. I know Derek's going to be in that first call out. David Henry should be in that first call out. Uh, let's, let's find out if James is going to have to earn this victory. I can tell you he's, he's done enough to be in the hunt. It's not a slam dunk. Very competitive lineup, man. I mean, a lot of things can happen. Derek Lunsford, uh, his muscle maturity may hold him back against competitive four on high, seven Sean, ten Camille, twelve David, thirteen Derek, fifteen Jose, and nineteen Flex. Yeah, I believe they got that right in terms of that. Call out. Yeah, so Ahmad Ashkenani, Sean Florida, Kamal Argogni, Derek Lunsford, Jose Raymond, and Flex Lewis are your first call out Come here on. at the 212 Olympia. And um, Steve is bringing out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, actually. Interesting. Only five or three are going to be the finals. Competitive and Camille, Kamal's got everything when he stood right there. Flex and David switch. Oh, of course, David Henry. I did not mention that David Henry. David Henry rounds out an opening call out of seven bodybuilders. So Kamal and Sean switch. Let's see what uh, Steve does and as he moves these guys around. Kamal is a very good addition. Very athlete. much so. He could be the answer to the aforementioned question who's the guy who's going to. Flex and Ahmad switch. Make a run at Flex Lewis. There you, go. you can see Kamal. Look at how tight Kamal is. Doesn't have the arms, doesn't have the thigh speeds, but he's got more detail than Flex on the quads. And his abs are clearly standing out. Derek and Kamal switch. Hey, uh, Kamal is impressive. Yes, there's no question he showed up in shape. Derek's got a very pretty athletic body. Just it looks young to me. Gentlemen, give yourself some room. Him, but he's up against some seasoned veterans. And hit a front double Flex Lewis is 10 years older. Can you imagine what Derek looks like in 10 years? See, Flex Lewis is sandwiched between two guys that I don't think have enough to beat him. Mm -hmm. Kamal is an interesting scenario as you look at Flex and Kamal, who are separated right front now by Ahmad right. Ashkenani. I'd like uh, to see Kamal next to him. I would too. I think you got to move uh, uh, Ashkenani out. His quads are just not in this race. Right now, Ashkenani has two different Side bodies, chest. upper body and lower body. The lower body is playing catch up. Derek Lunsford is looking better as the contest goes. And it's great to see Jose Raymond in this, his final bodybuilding contest uh, here Back in this first life, call out. So a real credit to him going out on his, very much on his own terms. This is from the back, Kamal's hamstrings are just not up to snuff. He's got the detail, his boots are in, but the hamstrings are not there. One of Flex Lewis's strengths from the Back rear. Spread. Ashkenani matches up on the waist up, but on the waist down, Flex turns the lights out. Derek is actually, looks like he's wider than James, but James is better Side condition. Tricep. James doesn't like to be called James. And he tells us he was called Flex before he got into bodybuilding, which is right. a whole nother conversation. <laughs> Go figure that one out. Um, Flex That's Lewis, of course, standing first. in the middle here, and uh, he seems to be well positioned to retain the title. Uh, does Derek Lunsford have the conditioning to take out Flex Lewis? But I do like that they are doing just what we discussed. 
They are swapping out Kamal. You gotta put Kamal in there, man. He's in condition, he's in shape. Look at his thighs next to Flex's quads. Donald's in thighs. This is gonna be an interesting pose for pose, Sean. Take it away, what do you well, got? I mean, again, Flex has the size on the quads, does not have the detail. Kamal but looks terrific. His midsection is, is all over Flex Lewis's. Favorite pose, muscular. Lex is carrying more muscle. Yep. Kamal may have better condition, but he's not full enough or thick enough. No, the, 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 the shoulders and the quads that Flex brings Relax. in contrast to a guy like Kamal is a significant difference that can't be ignored. Gentlemen, face the curtain and hit a back double bicep. So as good as Sean Clifford is, he's just too Spread small. Spread out, give yourselves... does sail off into the sunset. 14. Who's going to emerge, and will they be able to do what James did? I mean, Gentlemen, no one ever thought that Phil Heath was going to be the guy to carry the torch to close in on Lee Haney and Ronnie Coleman's record, and here we are on the brink of it happening. Well, I will say this right now. I would say Front that give him right. another year, and I would put Derek Lunsford as one of the favorites to win this competition next year. Um, guys like Kamal, of course, Trupan, if he can make his way over here, um, and Ashkenazi is always a threat, especially if he can get the right formula. He's a tremendous bodybuilder. But the trajectory of what Derek Lunsford has been able to do in a very short amount of time, bananas. it is bananas. And if you imagine another year, um, he's definitely a guy that could carry the torch from Flex Lewis a year from now. But there's obviously a lot of great bodybuilders. And, and um, Kamal is, uh, has turned out to be an interesting story, and he's given Flex Lewis a run for his money. Yeah, that's a surprise. Relax. Front lap spread. Again, just to, on a side note, I mean, a year ago, uh, we are missing. We we're talking about Sean's, you know. I'm not gonna, Relax. I can't let it fall on deaf ears, but we we're, we're desperately missing Sean Perrin and what he brings to this weekend. Only because we're going to sign off our webcast shortly as we finish this. I want to give bodybuilding fans around the world something to think about and something to talk about we might not get a chance to talk about this again I'm gonna ask you right now based on what you just saw should Phil Heath retain his title tomorrow night based on what you've seen so far if this show in its night I have a very if I gotta put it all on something I'm going with Sean Roden so right, this show's over tonight. I got Sean Roden. So right now, you have Sean Roden leading the 2018 Olympia heading into the finals. I do. And it will be very interesting to see what Phil does in this next 24 hours because I know Sean Roden is not going to take his foot off the gas. Phil has got to step up his game tomorrow, and he has to know that his back is against the ropes, and he's losing this fight. Well, you've just given the bodybuilding fans a lot to think about. Sean Roden in the eyes of Sean Ray, could potentially be the 14th winner of the Mr. Olympia contest on the same Relax, night Bay that Brian. Phil Heath is trying now to, to reach the record of Lee Haney and uh, Ronnie Coleman. So a lot to keep an eye on as we continue our way through our big weekend here.
in Las Vegas, and uh, you know, there's there's so much at stake here. I, I, it's funny because I actually thought coming into this thing that Flex Lewis was more vulnerable than Phil Heath, and the way it's playing out, Flex Lewis might have a stronger grasp on this thing than Phil Heath has, at least coming out of prejudging. Yeah, the irony of that. I mean. Phil's supreme confidence would lead you to believe that there is no chinks in the armor, but he definitely showed a few areas uh, of weakness. And Sean Roden, as quiet as he is, he's taken on the moniker of the quiet storm that Vince Taylor used to hold on. Didn't say a whole lot, didn't do a whole lot, so laid back, but he, he sucked it up. And he is thrown down the gauntlet. And you're hearing that from a fan. Competitor one, Ahmad. Well, it's not an act of desperation. 24 hours, a lot can happen, but he's got to go to work tonight while we're sleeping. Yeah. And there's no question that we all want to see, every bodybuilding fan wants to see something that later on they can, you know, tell their kids about it, they can say they were there, and to be able to be a part of history is always special. History can be in two ways. It can be a guy winning the contest for the very first time, yeah. or it could be a guy establishing an all-time record like Phil Heath is trying to equal tonight. So, or it could be the guy that upsets the, oh, the record, <laughs> the guy going for the record. That's right. <laughs> Again, but nobody cared or knew who Buster Douglas was until he knocked out the champ, That's Mike Tyson. Because right. when you think about bodybuilding in history, you always think you can name the year when a guy won the title for the first time. Everybody remembers Relax. 1998, Ronnie Cole. You know, we, that's what we do. We remember 2006, Jay Cutler. We remember right. those years. Mm -hmm question is, are we going to remember 2018 as the year Phil Heath equaled the record, Nicholas or are we going to remember it switch. as the year Olympia champion number 14 was crowned? A lot of interesting stories, Dan, and we got another 24 hours before we're sitting in this very Front seat and making that call. And I, it's a pleasure and an honor and a privilege to be here with the voice of professional bodybuilding calling this play-by-play -play action for you guys around the world. does continue on. There's a Back lot on the calendar following the Olympia weekend in terms of bodybuilding shows on a global scale. We know that there's competition over in Kuwait with Vader Budai putting on the Amateur Olympia. I'll be headed off to Italy next week where uh, IFB Pro Gianrico Pica is putting on the Amateur Olympia San Marino in Albano Terme, a brand new location at the Alexander Theater. That's next weekend. And of course we still have the Eagle Prague Pro Championships, I have to be pro competition uh, going on there as well. Yeah, Jim Mannion and his uh, team have done a tremendous job of establishing a presence really around the world. And, uh, you know, we used to talk about its strength domestically here in the USA with the NPC and the IFPB Pro League. But uh, with each passing month, there's more, the, the footprint continues to widen, and um, it's become a real um, remarkable thing Thank to see what uh, Jim Mannion and his team have been able to do around the world. 1982 that they put on the first NBC National Championships. It will be taking place November the 17th in Miami, Florida. Uh, get our next group of pros. Here's our final call out here. And uh, as predicted, the same guys we saw earlier in Jose Raymond, Ash Kanani, David Henry, and Sean Clarita. Jose and Sean Switch. Notice that the absent is James Flex Lewis, which tells you that James and Derek, being absent from this lineup, may be fighting it out. And, and our other guy. The new guy that we were talking about. Come on. Front lap, Fred. We may see them yet. Well, I think it's interesting what Steve Weinberger is doing. He's starting to show his hand a little bit. Ahmad Ashkenani, Sean Clarita, David Henry, and Jose Raymond in this call-out. But as you mentioned, three men omitted, and I guess we're going to see them next. Potentially the top three Back men on the omitted. At least my top three. Yep. Uh, and that might be the final comparison. i got to imagine what Hadi Chopin is thinking right at this point in time terms of what his bodybuilding aspirations are. And these are big comparisons now. Look, we focus on the winner, but uh, right now, 
there is a fourth and fifth place spot up for grabs. And Ahmad Ashkenani and uh, David Henry and Sean Clarita and Jose Raymond in his final ever bodybuilding competition is making a run at it. And um, it's great. These guys really, really brought it. You know, thinking about Derek Lunsford, who we don't see here, we'll see him in a second. When he first walked out, we weren't overwhelmed. We thought he was a little smooth. Yeah. It wasn't there, and his body is really starting to come alive. So that's going to be fun to see how it progresses over the remainder of tonight and into tomorrow. Yeah, you got to be mindful, Dan. Some of the guys may be a little flat, may be dehydrated. Some may be a little bit low on carbs. Some may have overspilled on their carbohydrates. That's why tomorrow's show is so important because then you have the free posing round where they can hit their poses to their music. The stress of today and the weekend is over. Tomorrow they'll have a little bit more of a bit more relaxed situation. And posing all day like they're doing now makes them a better bodybuilder tomorrow when they get some calories in. So it is a two-day competition. It's not over by a long shot. Some of these guys will look better. Some will look worse. Come on. Derek and Flex. All right, well, here it is, the top three at the 2018 Mr. Olympia, Kamal Agarni by way of Libya, James Flex Lewis by way of Wales, the Welsh Dragon, and Derek Lunsford, of course, Gentlemen by way the of the USA. You are looking at the present and the future of this division in one definitive final and dramatic call out as Flex Lewis looks to make his case for a seventh victory. And it's worth mentioning that Flex Lewis is competing in this division for the final time as he looks to go out on top. Derek Lunsford is continuing to improve, continuing to harden. And uh, Kamal, the big story of this division, I don't think there's a lot of people that came in considering him a contender for this show but he's put himself in that conversation. He's in that conversation Back for one line. reason. Conditioning. He doesn't have the best genetics. He doesn't have the thigh sweeps. He doesn't even have the hamstrings to be in this conversation, but he's got the condition to defeat some of the bodybuilders that had much more Side muscle track. mass on their frame. And that's what's beautiful about this division is that if you sacrifice a little size for a little bit more conditioning, you are able to stand next to guys that are necessarily better. Look at the serratus on them all. I mean, you're seeing things on his physique and some of the other bodybuilders you can't because they're just simply too heavy. And he's closing the gap on some of these guys because he's able to show detail. Well, that the what can. we're seeing Your is when we talk about the Stratus and the Obliques, that's the age thing. Now, granted, Flex Lewis is still relatively young, but his body is get, having a harder and harder time staying under 212 pounds. It's Thank exploding you, through the division line. is what's happening. Three, and that concludes our 212 long. preliminary judging. And uh, we're going to see tomorrow night how it plays out as our coverage here from Las Vegas continues. And that's going to wrap things up here from Friday night. And we'll continue. Join us back here tomorrow night from Las Vegas at the 2000.